Right, VXLAN configuration. If you see here, we got two spines and four leaves. And this is the physical interface. Ethernet 1 slash 1, 1 slash 2 on each leaf connects to both the spines on the top. And the spines starting from Ethernet 1 slash 1 to 1 slash 4 connects to all four leaves. And the IP addresses on the devices are like this. Each leaf have got a loopback interface with these address and loopback one interface with these address. And a spine has got these IP address on the loopbacks. Ten zero zero twenty two. Are they from Lubeck? No, Lubeck has got <coughs> 192.168.06.07 on spine, and these are uh, the physical interface address 10.0.0.22/30 subnet. And okay, self -underst uh, understandable one. On the van interface so leaf uh, four if you see it is also connected to van here on van interface between these two this is what the subnet you got 10 0, 0, 18 which means uh, this side it will be 19 and this side it will be 20 slash 20 slash 30. so ip addresses are like that and then we also Know that there is a routing protocol, IGP protocol, OSPF running on running between these two these six devices, and they have formed adjacency. It's already done. And the proof is here. When you go to one of the spine and type show IP OSPF neighbor, you see uh, full adjacency. So there's a point-to-point -point OSPF network type configured. So there is no DRBDR. It's fully adjacent full state full adjacent you will also have the similar output when you check from spine 2 now what are the things that are left first of all we need to do ibgp between leaf and spine and followed by we need to have a multicasting support so that broadcast and non-unicast and multicast traffic can be sent. Instead of flooding to every leaf and spine, we can only flood within the multicast group. For that, we need to enable multicasting. So these two major steps that need to, to, to configure to bring the fabric to the, to the level where VXLAN can be configured. So only when you finish up to this, uh, you you have made the fabric uh, VXLAN supportable fabric. So let's do that first. Uh, IBGP, because you got many leaf with similar configuration, what you can do is you can create a template. That's what they are doing here. Template peer, and then remote AS update source, and then uh, address uh, family IPv4 is enabled. Um, send the community both is enabled. The reason is BGP needs to carry, BGP needs to carry those additional um, um, payload, which is given by the VXLAN. So VXLAN informations or carried from one leaf to another using BGP. For that, the community need to be enabled. So we need to put this command so that the BGP will have the community support so that those route target values, those, uh, those informations that are from one leaf will be shared to the other leaf. 
And also we need to make the spine as a, a route reflector because we know to prevent loop, a route learn from one IBGP won't be given to another IBGP. To override this, we need to reflect the route. You know, so in the, in the picture, if you see here, we have more than one hop. But in an IBGP scenario, routes cannot be given more than one hop. So route given by the, in, the information shared by the leaf to the spine will stay with the spine. The spine won't give it. Only when we make uh, these as clients, the route gets, the information gets reflected. Likewise, I need to make this as a client so that the route given by this guy will be reflected to all others. So in general, we need to go and configure uh, 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 spines as a client. So we put this and then we call this template called the leaf peer. All these leaf, if you notice here, eight, nine, 10 and 11, all this for a leaf. So we are calling the template for eight, nine, 10 and 11. And, and then you save this by typing copy run start. So repeat the same thing on other spine as well. And then we need to go to the leaf and configure to spine. So that's the configuration you see here. This is uh, for leaf one and leaf one uh, has got two neighbor. One is uh, zero six and zero seven. If you see the picture again, zero six is spine one and uh, zero seven is spine two. So we configure an IBGP and then we say send the community both and then the other neighbor, we repeat the same thing. Do this on all four leaves. And that brings us to the end of IBGP configuration. And now next is the multicasting. And before we go to multicasting, when we verify, show IBGP summary, you can see the BGP neighborship. Um, from the spine, I can see four leaf as a neighbor. And now next is multicast support. There are various ways in which you can uh, have this multicast. Here they are using any cast RP, meaning you're going to use the loopback interface address of spines of um, loopback interface of spine as any cast RP address, which means you need to have same address. Let me check whether they have it on uh, spine. Okay, spine loopbacks are not mentioned here. We need to have same IP address on both the spine so that that can be declared as an RP address and it can be in any cast RP when you put any cast keyword. Why we have to use the same IP address? So that to all the leaves, you can provide one single RP address. Two spines having same address, and that address is declared as an RP address. And when you use that address on the leaf, if any one of the spine is reach, then you will be able to associate with the RP. And both the RP can be synchronized using MSDP, Multicast Source Discovery Protocol. Right, so that is the configuration that we will be seeing at the bottom. Uh, you see here on spine one and two, you give the same IP address. And then we enable SPARS mode, we run OSPF because it need to be a reachable address. Same address, and then on both the device, you will configure that same address as an RP. Mm -hmm. 
Lubeck one. Yeah. So Lubeck zero has got six and seven. And now we got additional another one. So for both this one as well as this one, this is the only RP. You you paste this on both the spines. There is no difference actually. They need not to do it separately. Here they are doing spine to see if you see it will be the same command. Um, you can just copy and paste the same thing on both the spines. Uh, so this is the address that which we created and it is declared as RP on both. And to reach this address, you can either go to router six, sorry, spine one or spine two. Anyone can take ownership of this RP address. That's the meaning of it. Yeah, 100 is a spines Lubeck address, Lubeck one address on both spines. On both spines. Spines are identified with six and seven. Spines are identified six and seven. For both spines, they have one common address, 192.168.0.100 on Lubeck 1. Uh, anyone you can use. That is the meaning of it. And now you get to the leaf and say who the RP is. Boom. This is straightforward and enable spats mode. Uh, before that, enable feature pin because it's Nexus. And then that's all the multicast. You must enable OSPF on the newly added Luba Core interface. No, leave devices already run OSPF. That is the beginning. The first job that we did when we begin this lab. OSPF now we added only on the newly added interface on the spine, which is 0 0.100 interface. Okay, now, after everything is configured proper, uh, the multicast uh, configurations on all leaf and spine, when you go to one of the spine and type this IP pin neighbor, you must see this output. Yeah. Oh, fine, next. Now comes the VXLAN configuration. You see, VXLAN, Virtual Extendable Local Area Network needs two things mainly. One, the interface. The interface is needed. And then the ID is needed. The interface is called as NVE. Network Virtualization Edge. For VXLAN to operate, there is need for an interface. Right now, all the interfaces that we have in this topology are a routed interface, are doing layer three. We need a special interface where VXLAN can be operated. That is why we cannot use interface tunnel zero. For GRE, we used to have tunnel zero. Even for IP set, we VTI, we used to have tunnel interface. But for VXLAN, VXLAN encapsulation won't operate in tunnel interface because it's layer three. Which one? Tunnel interface is layer three. We need an interface which can carry the VXLAN encapsulation, which can encapsulate the packet with VXLAN header. So there is a special virtual interface that is designed to support this feature called NVE, Network Virtualization H. NVE. 
but I think it is written as NVI network virtualization. It's it's for all the devices NVI. So the NVI interface will not be in spine. It will be only on the leaf because the tunnel is negotiated between leaf to leaf. All the control plane operations for the traffic that enters VXLAN is only in the leaf, not on the spine. All the control plane operations, all the intellectual operations for the traffic that enters and leaves the leaf are only on the leaf, not on the spine. Spine is just a reflector. So if you see more configurations are only on the leaf. Now, for each EPG, for each group, there is need for an ID. For example, in the, in the picture, if you see, we have two groups. One is server one group, another one is server two. There are two different groups. And the server one belong to this group, 140.1. 140.1. And uh, 172.20, this is 141. So that's the group. So different uh, VLAN also. This is 140, this is 141 VLAN. Oh no. I don't know why my pin behaves like this. Okay. 140. That's the VLAN number. So they belong to two different groups. We, 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 in the ACA language, we call it as EPGs. This is one endpoint group, that is another endpoint group. Here, the reason why I call different EPG because they belong to different subnet and different broadcast domain, VLAN. Different VLAN. And now, we also have one more VLAN. <coughs> this is only for inter-VLAN routing. In order to route the traffic between these two VLAN group members, we need a common place where 140 can be exchanged with 141 and vice versa. So we have VLAN 999 for that. We call this layer three. That is what inter-VLAN routing, right? Here it is not inter-VLAN, here it is inter-VXLAN, you can say. Though for the end user it is inter-VLAN. Even the VXLAN, the traffic coming from this VNI need to enter into this VNI and vice versa. For that you need one common place. For that you need a VNI. <coughs> That's why we call it as layer 3 VNI. Where the routing becomes possible. Right, next. In this lab, they are asking us to create even the tenant. Tenant is another logical, you know, it's an organization, a logical unit and an organization. Uh, so you can have many number of tenants. This VXLAN that you create for one tenant and uh, the reaction that you create for another tenant will be totally isolated from each other. So it's an organizational unit, you can say. Separation of traffics for the recreate tenant. Now, NVE is different, VNI is different. VNI is the ID to identify the VLAN traffic that enters that needs to get carried by VXLAN. It is just an ID, but NVE is 
yet to come we are going to see later it's a tunnel interface it's a virtual interface that will negotiate tunnel with the remote vni members so you see for vxlan routing you need one layer 3 vni for every tenant or vrf so what are the features that need to be enabled to do this vxlan configuration on a nexus device first one you need to do this feature nv vni vni sorry vn segment to vlan base only when you when you put this command this mapping is possible which mapping vlan to vxlan mapping is possible this table you know this table is also important So, if you want the traffic from this VLAN to get encapsulated with this VNI, this feature that you just saw is important, the one which I have highlighted. Only after that, you will have this command. Which command? Let me show you. This command. You go under a VLAN, and then inside the VLAN, you say VN segment, this mapping. So this command, if you don't put, you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot find that mapping command and the VN segment command under VLAN. You will have VLAN command, but when you go inside, you will not find that VN segment command. So before you go to VLAN, you make sure you create this feature, enable this feature. Next is for the NVI, Network Virtualization Edge, you need this command, NV overlay, Network Virtualization overlay. Only then that interface, tunnel interface can be created, that virtual interface can be created. Next is for EVPN to operate. EVPN means what? BGP. BGP's extension, BGP's community, BGP's payload. For that to operate on the virtual interface called NVE, then you need to put this command also. Only after you put this command, you will be able to configure address family EVPN under BGP, BGP community under EVPN address family. See, earlier we did EV, uh, sorry, uh, BGP community, but that is only that is only for underlay. Earlier you made IBGP between leaf and spine. Those things are only for underlay to do the encapsulation. But this is for overlay <coughs> inside the tunnel. Those MAC address to IP mapping for those members that are connected to the leaf, those VXLAN payload, <coughs> you need another address family another BGP community. Okay, now, these features after you enable, um, this is uh, 
basic thing that we, we all need to do. We all know this. What? Spanning tree should not block. Spanning tree should not block this port. Which port? The port where the, the members, EBGs are connected. <coughs> We do not want this port to get blocked. I don't know why my pen is behaving like this. Funny, funny. We do not want this port to be blocked. When will this port be blocked? For example, instead of a server, you got a switch here. And you are connected like this. So there are chances that this will get blocked. Because there are redundant paths, isn't it? To avoid that, what we need to do is we need to make Nexus as a root switch. For that, we put this command. Priority for zero. You can also put zero. <coughs> for these VLANs. What is this VLAN? This is server 1. This is server 2. This is L3. All right. And then this table, what you see here, 140 need to be mapped to this. That's what we see here. 140 is mapped to VN segment, this. Yeah. In this uh, lab, only one. And this is just a name. This is not VR, a VRF membership. This is not VRF membership. Just a name. You see, they asked you to give a name. So they are giving a name. And uh, VLAN 999. They don't have any VNI to map. Sorry, we have VNI to map. There is no any uh, name to be given. They have not mentioned it. And they have mentioned it why they are not given. Okay, they didn't give. You can, if you want, you can give this name. They didn't give. Okay, so this is uh, easy understanding. Just we are doing uh, which we let. Which we have in segment, and uh, the root switch configuration is done. Now goes the VRF. Okay, now if you see. I told you all the configuration, all the control plane informations are only on the leaf. So these configurations are only on the leaf. Where we say, I have a tenant called tenant one. And uh, this is layer three, VNI, because VRF is what? Virtual routing and forwarding. It's a layer three instance. So we need to specify that layer three VNI. Mm -hmm. A uh, kind of uh, ID for the controller. And then, apart from that, we also need a route distinguisher. Again, you don't need to assign any number. You simply say auto. It will automatically generate one unique number. Route distinguishers are locally significant. So if two leaves generate same number, that doesn't matter. If they generate different number also, that doesn't matter. And then we say address family IPv4 unicast route target uh, uh, both means this is for normal routing. This is for eVPN route, eVPN encapsulation. <coughs> and now you see in HSRP, in VRRP, and all, you might have seen uh, virtual. 
MAC address, floating MAC address. Here also we are creating something like HSRP only. What? This server one and server two, they are in two different VLAN. Now they need a gateway. Now, if I make leaf two as a gateway, then leaf one need to go all the way to leaf two to know the destination server two. Instead of that, we want to have all the leaf to be a gateway. But we do not want to have different IP address and different MAC address. We want to have single IP address and single MAC address for all the gateways, all four leaf. So that there won't be any ARP issue in the server side. We call it as pervasive gateway, floating gateway. It's exactly the same what you saw in VRRP and HSRP. You, we used to provide one IP address, which is a floating IP address. And HSRP or VRRP MAC address will be dynamically assigned using the group ID. Here, we need to give manually the ID, the MAC address for the gateway. So this MAC address will be same for all leaf. So the gateway is same. But the same gateway. It's here. Correct. Correct. See, our aim is to ping from the server, which is in this subnet, and to this uh, subnet, isn't it? For this to happen, we need a routing table, isn't it? So you create a, a routing table, VRF. Now that routing table needs an ID. That is why we give 50999. There is no need for an IP address. And for the routing table to be identified over the tunnel, you need RD. This is for local the device to identify the routing table with one common MAC address, common ID, common MAC address, and common gateway for each VLAN. And this is for VPN. You know VPN. VPN needs RD. That is different. That is for VPN ID. This is for local identification. Why there is need for an IP address? There is no need for an IP address. We are not going to anywhere uh, in that VNI 50999. That is only an exchange place. That's just like a routing table. That's a control plane identification. All right, that's a control plane ID. Control plane ID need not to control plane need not to have a un, uh, when did we have an IP address for a routing table? We never had an IP address for a routing table. See when you type IP routing, routing function starts working on a router. Sorry, on a layer three multi-layer switch. The default there won't be routing. I'm talking about multi-layer switch. When you, when you type IP routing, this is what actually happens. A uh, routing table gets created, uh, a unique identification, here we call this VNI. A unique identification for that routing table is assigned on the multi-layer switch. Same thing we are doing here manually. We create a routing table by creating VRF and then we give an ID. 50999. Now, we need one common IP address for each subnet. And for all subnets, for the entire router, for the entire routing table, one MAC address. Why only one MAC address? 
See, we are not going to have multiple interfaces. We are going to have one single tunnel for, for any destination to any VNIs. Single tunnel needs how many IP address? Only one IP address. Oh, sorry, only one MAC address. Single tunnel needs only one MAC address. Do, then you for each tenant you need to have one MAC address. Each tenant we will have one MAC address. That is very important. Now, so we go create one SVI and we uh, make this SVI as a member of the tenant. Two SVIs for two VLETs and then the gateway address and then uh, any cast gateway, meaning floating gateway. So all leaves will respond to this address. And they will only give this MAC address when an ARP request comes. When an ARP request comes for this address, this MAC address will be responding. Even for this address, the same MAC address will be responding because it's it's going to be from one single NVI, NVE, network specification. And then at last, you need to have one layer three, but you don't need to provide any IP address. You just make it as a member and say IP forwarding. IP forwarding is very important because it's for routing purpose. <coughs> and now, the NVE interface, Network Virtualization Edge Interface. So this is the interface via which all the tunnel negotiations happen. And then tunnel comes up. For any number of tenants, this is going to be one interface. interface. So interface NVE, source, bug zero, host visibility protocol is BGP. That's what the control plane protocol that we are using. And we say for server group one, 5140, this is the multicast address for bound traffic. For server group two, this is the bump traffic. And for layer three, <coughs> associate PRF, the tenant one. Right? And uh, if you have another tenant, then you will have another VNI for that layer three. That number you will mention. That will be mapped to some other tenant, you know, in the previous configuration. So there's one network virtualization edge for multiple tenants is possible. All right, so that's all. You need to repeat that on, on, on all the leaves. And then when you go to any one of the leaf and type show NVE, NVI, Network virtualization edge, VXL network identifier, and VNI. Then you can see here this mapping. Oh, sorry. Okay, anyway, I'll copy this. You can see exactly what you saw in this table. This table we, we mapped 140 to 5140. And you can see that here, 140 subnet members are mapped to this. It's the same NVE1, network virtualization edge one. You can have multiple tenants. Now we have VLANs. This is L2, L2, this is L3. For L3, I multicast is not needed, so it's not so. Actually, the story is over. All others are verification. And then comes the, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. The main story is here. So far, we have all those um, control plane 
means routing table, everything is good, but to pass the information through the control plane, the payload, the, the, the EPG information from one leaf to another leaf, we want to use BGP. That's what we said as a protocol. Now, the protocol needs to get ready for it. For that, we need to go under the address family of BGP and say L2 EVPN. Okay, now this is on the spine. Okay, uh, um, retain route target all, meaning the route targets that is coming from the leaf need to be maintained. The route target tag values, you no? Know? Usually when it comes to one hop via the tunnel, it will change. We don't want to change, we want to retain. And then we call the template which we created in the beginning when we were doing IBGP. And we say, all those leaves belong to L2 EVPN. So when you add to the template, they get attached to all the leaves, isn't it? Send the community both route reflector client, all this are under the address family. See, earlier you did this, these commands, not under the address family, under IPv4. This is for L, L, L2 VPN, EVPN you have to repeat. And also you need to go to the leaf and repeat the same thing for both the spines. Same thing, we repeat two times here because we don't have template. Whereas in the above we have template. EVPN command, retain route target for this name, remote ace. I repeat the same thing for the other name. And then this is the global configuration, but this is not under BGP. This is global mode. We create EVPN. This VNI, you know, this VNI, you know, both are L2. We have to do route target, we need to create route target and uh, route distinction. Please understand, this is very simple. Earlier also we did route distinction and route target. Those things are for the underlay, this is for the overlay. We did not do route distinguisher under EVPN, we did under the VRF. This is for EVPN address family, that is for IPv4 address family. That's all actually. Now you need to go and configure those server facing interface in VLAN. You understand this command, right? And then go to the Linux server, put this command, and then try pinging. The ping should happen. After comes the layer three out. Layer three out is a normal routing. I want you to go through it. And if you face any trouble, let me know. Layer three out will come after this. Okay, this is layer three out starting. It's normal routing only. You will understand very well if you go there. If you face any trouble, let me know. Right? So easy, no? Uh, 